everybody welcome back to the channel this video we are looking at the uh, sunday nfl price picks plays we have a full board on price picks to pick from got six props i want to share with you guys thursday went four for six uh just missed out on the two giant props all for the san fran props hit should have went with the under but see if we can get it uh for sunday's week three slate as always if you enjoy the content appreciate the like button subscribe if you have not already and let's get started. So uh, first picks that I'm looking at, we've got a lot of receiving yard props. Uh, typically, that's going to be one board that I'm looking at quite a bit. Uh, there's some that just seem really low for some, for whatever reason. Uh, first one that we're going to start with is we are going to go into what should be the highest scoring game of the slate. It has a 53.5 point total. No other game is sniffing 50 for tomorrow's slate. And we're going to pick the best receiver in the game. Uh, maybe debatable if you're a Dolphins fan. But I'm taking Justin Jefferson. His number went up to 101.5. It was 100.5 if you got that. But just feel like in what should be an absolute shootout, it's at home in Minnesota. Jefferson put up, putting up easily 140, 150-yard performances this year. Only thing that he's looking for is to get into the end zone, which uh, he was as close as he could get last week and then ended up fumbling. But against the Chargers defense, who have looked uh, very mediocre through the first couple of weeks in week one, they let uh, Tyree Kill go absolutely nuclear, 11, 215, and two touchdowns. Last week, you know, the Titans, they like to run a lot more. Um, but you still saw Tannehill throw for almost 250 yards, and Burks had a good game with 3 for 76. Uh, but Jefferson's just a different beast. Uh, I would expect a performance similar to what Tyree Kill did in Week 1. I kind of expect that type of high-scoring game. Maybe not 200 yards, but I definitely think he can get you over 101. Um, so that's the first prop we're looking at. Second one, we're going to do a bring back in that game. You have Keenan Allen is down to 68.5 receiving yards. I think that looks really good. And then, um, don't know where, if they put Mike Williams, if they took him off. But, uh, he's still here. But his number is now at 64 and a half. It was at 59 and a half earlier if he got that. But at this point, I'm going to take Keenan Allen, who's only four yards more than him. Um, Austin Eckler's ruled out for this game. And I would expect Keenan Allen to kind of do what he did last week, which he was, uh, well, both him and... Uh, Mike Williams got a ton of the targets from uh, Herbert, as they typically do, but Allen got eight grabs, 111 yards, two touchdowns. And without Eckler, they only gave one target to Joshua Kelly out of the backfield. Herbert threw 41 times, and he was looking to Mike Williams. He was looking to Keenan Allen all game. They haven't used a rookie, Quinton Johnson, much, which is a bit surprising. But for Keenan Allen, 68 and a half receiving yards, they can do that in the first half. Uh, the third one that we're looking at is C.D. Lamb, 69 and a half receiving yards. This one is an afternoon game. Going up against the Cardinals defense, who uh, look like world beaters in the first half against the Giants. Or maybe the Giants just were that bad. Probably a combination of both. Mostly the Giants being bad. But second half, they didn't do much. Maybe they got the call from the GM to stop scoring. Uh, however, we're still going to expect... Um, C.D. Lamb to get me 70 yards, even if the Cowboys blow him out. Uh, if they don't even need to use C.D. Lamb much in the first half, I mean, the second half, I still expect him to do some damage in the first half. Last week, Hyatt, two grabs, 89 yards, uh, 76 yards for Darren Waller. And you're getting C.D. Lamb, who's been an absolute favorite target for Dak Prescott. They lost Dalton Schultz in the offseason. They're not getting much production from Michael Gallup. So it's basically him, and then you're going to get Cooks, who missed last week, but... Lamb is the number one receiver, and it's really not much of a of a question. It's not much um, up for debate over in Dallas. So we got a couple receiving yard props. Jefferson, Keenan Allen, CeeDee Lamb, adding another one. This one is another one that I think is going to creep up as the day progresses. That is Calvin Ridley, over 69.5 receiving yards. So big reason is that going up against Houston Texans defense, who... Um, we saw Stroud play well last week, but they're not going to be a good defense, not going to be a good team this year. We know that Zay Jones is out, so you're getting a, a guy that lines up across from Ridley, runs a lot of routes. He's going to miss the game, so it's going to be on the shoulders of Ridley and Christian Kirk for much of this game. So 
just to get me 70 yards in a game against Houston after coming off of a poor performance, the whole team against the, the Chiefs where they only put up nine points. I expect Ridley and that offense to kind of be humming a bit. Expect Doug Peterson cook some things up. Expect performance similar to week one from Calvin Ridley instead of last week. We're going to take a break from the receiving yard props, go over two touchdowns, and we're going to take a look at Travis Kelsey. Uh, his number is at half a touchdown, which is an absolute, uh, well, in my eyes, it looks like one of the better plays on the board. If you look at sports books, uh, BetMGM has Kelsey to anytime touchdown at minus 175 for this affair. Uh, if we look at, pull up FanDuel's numbers quick, see if we can compare what FanDuel Sportsbook has this one at. Uh, FanDuel has Kelsey anytime touchdown at minus 150. So you're getting a good number on price picks, basically a minus 110 number. Um, and I expect Kelsey and that Chiefs offense to put up some points. So Kelsey over half a touchdown. Definitely book that one in. And then the uh, final prop that we are looking at, go back over to receiving yard props, taking Adam Thielen. He gets a, a solid upgrade at quarterback. This number it continues to creep up. It's at 37 and a half, was at 33, 34 and a half earlier, 35 and a half earlier this morning. Now it's at 37 and a half. People are over this prop, are all over it. Um, maybe you could take his targets instead, but I think with Dalton back there, they're gonna have to they're gonna throw more than they were with Bryce Young, especially if they get down in Seattle. And Thielen has been the number one basically the number one receiver uh for them. He's not Gonna be in a couple years, but probably next year. But right now, it's him, Chark, who's always banged up, not doing much this year, and Hayden Hurst as the guys that they're relying on. So that's what I got for you guys for this um, Sunday prize pick slate over 101 receiving yards for Justin Jefferson, over 60 and a half receiving yards, Keenan Allen, over 69 and a half receiving yards for CeeDee Lamb. Same deal for Calvin Ridley, one touchdown from Travis Kelsey, and then 37 and a half receiving yards for Adam Thielen. Those are the six that I have locked in. Um, other ones, want to look at the board if you're looking at some more slips. Rushing yard props, I'd say uh, Ford is probably going to get a lot of work, but Titans defense scares me a little bit. He could get some more out of the receiving game, but Gibbs, 49.5 rush yards, I think looks good just because uh, David Montgomery's not going to play. He's doubtful, and they're still going to run a little bit, and it's going to be going to Gibbs. Brian Robinson, same deal. I like him a lot. 67.5 rushing yards. That one looks really good. Don't know who's going to get a ton of work from the Saints. It probably will be Miller, but they have Taysom Hill there that they're going to use. Tony Jones. Um, most start out over 60 and a half, I like. And James Cook, 54 and a half, I like. And then Kenneth Walker at 64 and a half, I still like, even though they didn't, they kind of went away from him in the fourth quarter for whatever reason. And then looking at. Um, Passing yards for quarterbacks, I think you can take a shot on some of these ones that are just super low, um, like a, maybe not anybody up there, but maybe like a C.J. Stroud at 229 after throwing for almost 400 last week. Um, I kind of like Andy Dalton just because his number is really low at 213.5. I think, especially if they get down, they're going to throw, and he's a competent quarterback. He's been in the league. He's done that. Uh, so those are a couple other props you can look to. Last board we'll check out is um, receptions. So some of these, if you're not looking at the receiving yards, you can take a look at their receptions, like an Amari Cooper, four and a half, taking the over on that looks good. Alave at five receptions, like the over on him. Uh, Hill at six and a half, I like that one. Same thing with these two. I like their yards more, but I think both are solid. Mike Williams over receptions looks good at only at five for him and should be getting a lot of targets um, just without Eckler. Uh, down here, DJ Moore, CeeDee Lamb, and maybe I like Kelsey's touchdown or yards more than his receptions, honestly. And that's pretty much it. You know, stay away from the Monday night games for right now. Uh, but that's it. What I got for you guys. Thank you for watching. Best of luck if you are going to tail the slip. Be putting this in on BetMGM. And I will catch you all next time.